Well, here we go. A brand new look at racing, thanks to Tab. This show is called So We Think, and great to be joined by Benway every single Thursday to take a look back, to take a look forward, and to hopefully pick a few winners. Ben? I think the highlights are always going to be the guests, but we want everybody else out there to be engaged as well. And while the name may suggest there's a lot of thinking, there will be a fair bit of speculation, maybe just off the cuff, maybe some things we haven't put a lot of thought into. But when it comes to the show, I'm just stunned they've paired us together, truth be told. There are not enough words you can fit within <laughs> half an hour to allow both of us to get all of our thoughts out there. Hey, we'll try. We'll have a bit of fun along the way as well and try and give you a giggle if you're listening anywhere across the country. So this weekend, I reckon it is Australia's greatest race day in terms of the card that we've got at Royal Randwick and also at Caulfield, headlined by the $20 million Tab Everest. An amazing race, but then supported by the likes of the $5 million King Charles, which was the George Main over the mile. And then in Melbourne as well, the Caulfield Guineas. Like, how good is it? Yep, that battle is going to be fantastic. Militarised down there and at time of record, there's a little bit of rain about, which I'm sure is putting a smile on the face of many backers on that front. In terms of this show, hard launch. Yeah. I mean, so uh, the powers that be, they wanted a soft launch. And we said, nay, no. No, let's yet. go on Broadway. We are launching Everest <laughs> week. This is us. You know, big dogs, big moments. Yeah. So we're launching this Big week. ratings, big revenue. But I think that's what they 12 say. Million, 12 horses, uh, sorry, 20 million, 12 horses, 1,200 metres. There's a lot to be excited about here. But, yeah, you look at the horse flesh across the country, alligator blood down there, militarised down there. Up here, we've got the best sprinters in the world on offer, and I can't wait to see I Wish I Win and Co. do battle. It is going to be a great race day. Uh, let's go back and review our favourite Everests of all time. I have set you the task of ranking your top five Everests. Now, the criteria was loose, but you've gone your well, own way. there was way. none. The well, yeah, it just was top five. So create your own adventure, I guess. Which way have you gone? So for one, this is exciting because we actually get to talk about the history of the Everest. How have we got to the seventh edition? Yeah, it's just snuck up like that. I feel like it was yesterday we had the first one. So questions to you first. So is it based on best horse? On that, ratings-wise, Nature mm -hmm. Strip. Yep. Fastest horse over 1,200. Fastest yes, yes, over yes. the Ramwick 1,200 ever. Yes, yes, yes. Biggest margin, classic legend. Most wins, Red Zell mm. with two. Biggest price from a punting perspective. You've complicated this I know, way I'm just too saying much. I don't know the criteria. So when it comes to my list, there was not a horse that has run in an Everest until now that could have beaten Classic Legend the day Classic Legend won, in my opinion. Okay, so that's your criteria. So that is my number one. Nature Strip ran in several editions of the race, and even the editions he didn't run didn't win. He was the narrative. How do we beat Nature Strip? Why didn't he win? He won. How good? He was always the talking point as the top rated sprinter in the world. So he's in at number two. I guess the shock with my list is that Red Zell's last. Yes, it is. And why is that? Because, because he's, he's won two of them. And it's, yeah, it's my top selection. So the reason I had him last, and you've got to put somebody last. Yeah. It's been five winners, can't always six be winner. editions. Yep. You can't. But he did win twice. I accept <laughs> that that's a decent <laughs> enough thing to be maybe elevated off the bottom. But I don't think his best was as good as any of the others. I don't think his best beats Giga Kick. I don't think his best beats Yes, Yes, Yes. Nature Strip, classic. I Too can, harsh? Uh, I can only imagine how much time this sp you spent at night thinking about this because you've Lost. delved into some real dark places there. So I had Red Zell on top for the pure fact that he won two of them on speed, tough, like that's so how you want to win a race, So you put right? in limited research is what you're saying. No, 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 not at all. Yeah. And triple crown syndications, I think that's a, you know, it's syndicator's dream to win an Everest. I mean, people thought when this concept initially was ideal, you know, came came about that this was going to be a, a play for the rich. Not at all. These guys mm. were syndicated. So Red's all at the top for me. Nature Strip number two, $20 million in prize money. As you said, world's top rated sprinter. A very difficult horse at times. So went through five different trainers not the easiest horse, a nine-time Group 1 winner. Giga kick for me because I think history will show in the future for him to be a freak and a superstar. Mm. And also the way he won it as an undefeated three-year-old. Yes, yes, yes for the time and the stallion prospect afterwards. And then classic legend oh, number five on. for me. Beautiful grey. I know he was the fave. He won the shorts. Kira McAvoy rode him to perfection again that day. That's my top five. Do you agree, though, that his best was better than the rest? 
maybe Nature Strip might be the one. I reckon Nature Strip might have yeah. pushed the boat out there. If they yeah. if the five of them raced. Oh wow. Well, I mean, now you're really delving into some deep areas. If the five of them were to race Does Red Zell win? No. Well, he shouldn't be. Oh, for God's sake. Your beauty. There's a top five. Hey, if if you've got thoughts at home as to what the top five Everest winners are of all time, let us know via social media. Jeez, it's a big discussion. We've got a guest. Well, Ben, one jockey who's had immeasurable success in the Everest so far is Kieran McAvoy, and he joins us on the show. Six rides to date, Kieran, three wins. It's a race that's been very kind to you in the years gone by. Yeah, it has. It's um, been a bit of a whirlwind to think uh, back to those early days. The race has um, just kept growing and growing, as, as a lot of people have said in the past few days. And, um, yeah, it's, it's been an amazing journey, that's for sure. Pretty proud to have been able to snare three of them, uh, I must admit. It's, um, it's, been, it's been really exciting and I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased to have been able to get another ride and, and compete in again this year. It's a very competitive jockey room and we quite often have internationals making their way down for the carnival as well. I can't help but think you might have run your race a little bit. There won't be too many in that room <laughs> who are happy for him if he wins that's again. True. <laughs> Don't you think? If you suddenly get four, I think that's borderline greedy. Can I actually just mention this? I was with your beautiful wife on Monday and I said to her, what would another Everest mean to you guys if your husband was to ride another winner on Saturday. She goes, well, it's perfect. It equals out the mantelpiece two on each side. <laughs> yeah, fair. If, well, if that's the priority. But I, I think you can share them around if that's all right, Karen, after this one. It was it was quite funny when I did the I did a rock climbing thing um, a couple of days ago with Nash and, and um, up, up the wall we went anyway. Nash beat me and I'm in a chat with a few of the boys and, and Huey Bowman said, ah, McAvoy's in no hurry. He's got a few of those at home already because, sorry, when we got, we had to get to the top first to touch the trophy. And yeah, Bowman said, ah, McAvoy's in no hurry. He's got a few of those. <laughs> All right, you've got a you've got a live chance as well. A very, I think it's fair to say, enigmatic course. We don't entirely know what we're going to get, but off the back of what we saw in the slipper, we do know the top end ability would have Shinzo right in the race. Yeah, I've ridden him a bit this preparation. Um, I still think um, you can put a line through his last run and. In, in my opinion, he's he's still a class individual. He's a he's a quality colt and um, brilliant winner of of a, of a golden slipper and um, you know beating cylinder in 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 in, in nice fashion. And um, he's everything points to him being in really good order. I know Chris and and Charlie and his team are delighted with him. I've ridden him probably four or five times the last couple of weeks, and I'm I'm really happy with where the horse is at. So you know he's 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 obviously in a, in a fantastic lineup, but um, the horse himself, I think, can can really make his presence felt. And um, the closer I get to the race, the more excited I get. And, and um, I think he can run a great race. I, I want to be a believer. Yeah, I am a believer. I mean, I loved him in the slipper. But you're telling us that after the Golden Rose, we're forced to go back, wide run, two out of five lame afterwards. That was just a, a couple of days where things just didn't go his way and he's, he's come out of that in tip-top shape. Yeah, I, I definitely, you know, the way it panned out, the way the race shaped, um, evolved and and positioning and running. He, 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 I was on a horse that hung hung quite left, um, quite badly left as we, we we went around the corner. And Ryan sort of was in a position where he had to then come around me. And um, I, I reckon just you, you can put a line through through that run. So his action's been great since, which is really positive. Um, Chris and, and their farrier team have been doing a um, a good job there. And um, he was bouncing this morning, the horse, when I rode him and, and just did his last little bit of work. So um, he was coiled up like a spring, was my words to, to Chris and Charlie when I come back. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a fantastic race. Really excited to be on him. That's strange. That now makes it 12 jockeys that have said coiled up like a spring. To Everyone the is. trainers when they popped <laughs> off this week. But I hope that every horse is. We want to see every single horse there absolutely cherry ripe, putting in their best. And we'll talk about maybe draw and race shape a little bit later on, but we did want to take a bit of a trip down memory lane with you because you have built a remarkable a remarkable resume over the years. Talk to us about day dot. So we go back to Sejuna, first race ride. How were the nerves and do you remember it like it was yesterday? Uh, parts of it I do. It was back in 1997, so Easter Saturday of 1997 it was. Um, it was uh, a fair, fair, fair few moons ago, but... Um, yeah, it was a little non-tab meeting about an hour from Streaky Bay, which is where I grew up in, 
That was at a little place called Sejuna. It's a dirt track, quite a big track, about probably a mile and a quarter around. And um, it was uh, it was it was only a small field. I think there was about six or seven uh, competitors in the race, and um, I think we jumped out, sat outside the lead, and away we went. So um, it was it was nice to get the first win on the board and had the family there. And then I think I backed up on the Monday with another winner winner as well. So. Um, it was opening the account pretty early, which was fantastic. But uh, yeah, things have things have gone pretty smoothly since um, back back in '97. So not long after that, only a few years later, mm. you really land yourself on the world stage by winning the Melbourne Cup on board Brew. You were a little baby then. Now yeah. you look at your resume, and you know you're well over 75 Group Ones all up. That day, take us through the moment where you first passed the post in the race that stops the nation. Yeah, it's it's remarkable. Um, you know, look back now, and I started in '97, and then sort of got jettisoned to Melbourne '98, and then and then struggled to settle into Melbourne, and then got going in '99. Started teaming up with Mike Maroney and a few others, and to think that I was able to secure that Melbourne Cup ride was, um, you know, a, a real dream come true and a and a real turning point in, in my career. I was only just out of my apprenticeship, and Brew was um, by Sir Tristram out of Horlicks. He was. Uh, he, he was bred to win the Melbourne Cup and, um, yeah, I was lucky enough to get the ride and then we drew the outside barrier, which was, which was uh, a bit, um, it, it, was, it was a bit uh, hard to swallow because I knew the horse had such a great chance in the race. He won with 58 kilos on the Saturday, Christy Munts won on him and then I was able to secure the ride. He dropped down to 49 kilos in the Melbourne Cup on the Tuesday, so it was a big weight drop and, um, it was it was a case of everything going to plan. I was able to jump out, slot it across into a midfield position, uh, travelled like a dream, and then from sort of the 800 to the 400, I just kept picking them off one by one on the bridle. And as we turned for home, I had about three or four to pass, and I hadn't even let him go yet. And um, and, and then when I pressed the button, away he went. So it was it was a remarkable feeling to to have been able to open the Group One winning account, winning the Melbourne Cup. It was. Uh, I think I was I was I was pretty spoiled. That's for sure. That must be such a good feeling. I mean, I'll never experience that. You would have if you chopped both of my legs off. I still couldn't ride at forty nine. <laughs> but I, I will say it's a huge opportunity for you, isn't it? The riding light, the aspect of that when it comes to these big races, because so often you get horses light in that really, in terms of jockeys available, there's maybe three or four options. That, and, yeah. And yeah. You know, really, one of the best in the caper, so you're an easy option for the for them to go with. But I, I guess that has created opportunities for you. Yeah, definitely. I'm lucky. I've stayed pretty light, and I, I can ride. You know, all my Melbourne Cup winners had, I think, below 53. So uh, that in itself says that um, it, it definitely assisted and, and 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 helped me obviously obtain the rides. And um, um, just being able to ride light is is fantastic when it comes to spring and autumn because it opens up opportunities in those big handicaps and. Um, it's, uh, it's 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 been great to, to to stay on the light side. That's for sure. Let's uh, talk about the Everest. So you've won three. The first on Redzel, then he backs it up, which is a crazy story in itself. And then Classic Legend, who is now in your care at your farm with the family. What's your fave? What's your fave memory and your, uh, your favourite win? They're they're all they're all quite sweet. Obviously, um, probably the first one. I think it's. It, They've all got different feels about them, and, and you don't like to put one on top of the other, really. But the, the first one was um, it was such a build up and the hype, and you know, a new race on the scene. I remember never, I was never, I've never been so nervous. You know, this big money race was was on our um, on, on our on our on our shores, and and um, yeah, the, it was quite overwhelming actually. The lead up, and you know, once I got on the back of Red Zell going to the gates, I was. I was pretty. I was fine then, but just the, the lead up was was astronomical in in regards to pressure, and um, you know the, the day itself has continued to grow and grow. But you know, just the Snowdens were, were fantastic. They were so good at being patient with Redzel and just building him up from a young horse all the way through to to you know the horse just kept building and getting better and stronger, and I suppose gaining more confidence through uh, the ranks as he as he started winning from from uh, those early years and, you know, he, he kept going to a new level and um, there was a bit of rain around that day that he, that he, that he won, uh, that might have been his second one, but anyway, the day that he won his first one, we, um, we jumped out from a, from a good stall and 
Poutsen was uh, an inside draw. I think it drew one with Jeff Lloyd on. And Redzel was always quite quick out, and it just worked out to, to the letter, really. We were able to sit outside of Hootson, who, who set, us, set us along at a nice tempo, and I was able to really um, get Redzel in a rhythm, and he travelled fantastically well. And turning for home, I thought, geez, we've had a pretty good time of it here. Uh, pressed the button, and away he went. And, and um, yeah, first ever it's done and dusted. It was, it was, it was a pretty good feeling to, um, to have been able to, to get him across the line for the Snowdens, who had been... Um, part of my career since I moved back here in Australia with with Darley and Godolphin and um, and for the Triple Crown and their big syndications, it was uh, fantastic to have a, a huge bunch of owners, um, you know, living it up when I come back to scale on Redzel. So talk us through that coming back to scale. So I'm sure as you hit the line, that's a just a feeling of exhilaration. But then that's sustained as oh, you go past for the an next enormous 20 minutes. crowd. Yeah. Talk us yeah. through that feeling of of walking back with the crowd off to your left as you're making your way through and into the winner's enclosure there. Yeah, it's 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 one of the best the best feelings. It's um you know, you'd like to be able to bottle that feeling, that's for sure. It's uh you know, whatever big race you win there's always a you know, that elation and that feeling that you that you get and the, the Everest is um is 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 pretty high up the list of um or the the bottle of euphoria is pretty big when you're talking about bottling something like that. The the the, the excitement after winning an Everest is is massive and um you know, it's it's uh, it's a pretty special feeling, that's for sure. Are you a uh, are you a manifester? Do you do you sit there, say, for example, today or tomorrow, and play out the race? I know a couple of others we were talking to it. Who was it in Queensland that won the group? Oh, right um, Kyle Wilson Taylor, a big yeah. mani- um, manifester and visualizer. So we'll sit on the mechanical horse during you know during the week, getting his fitness up, and maybe you know having a trying to have a sweat thereafter as well. Yeah. And not only playing the race out as a map scenario in his mind, but manifesting how it would feel to win. And that's he said that played a huge uh, result in him getting his first group one during the Queensland Carnival. Even his yeah. celebration, remember? He did yeah, his he celebration on yeah. the mechanical horse, yeah. I wouldn't say I, I, I sit there and manifest the feeling, but I suppose you go through the race in your head, you know, a number of times, um, leading up to it and, you know, try and, I suppose you do try and visualise a little bit as to where you might be in, in the run and where the opposition and it's sort of quite, that first furlong is always obviously key no matter what race you're in. So you're, you're, you're competing in. So just trying to get your head around how it might play out there um, through, through the first furlong and try, I try not to sort of overthink it too much as well. If you, if you spend six hours of your Friday thinking about one race and, you're going to end up fried, so you know you get it. You get it all set, and you have. Everyone has different routines, and then, bang, bang, bang. You you get to Everest Day. You you go through the card, and then you you have a quick look there as you as you're getting ready for the the main race. I think as J Mac said in a in an interview mm. somewhere, it goes pretty deathly quiet in the lead up. There's usually a bit of banter, this, that, and the other during during the day's play, but um, those final ten minutes before you go out, it just does it quietens down a bit and. Um, Everyone switches on, so it's it's um, that that's the way I like to do it anyway. And it's um, you know game on, and, and everything can change in a heartbeat once the gates open. But it's good to go out there, um, you know, with, with a bit of a plan for sure. Can we can, can we kind of do it? <laughs> what visualize it? Yeah, I kind of want to. I think we can do this with Karen here, okay. even if it's just even if it's just quickly. So, for example, gates are about to open, Karen. Yep. Talk us through the start and where you're looking to get to. Should I close my eyes and take I myself think we to Randwick? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, first, first, first thing is you've, you've got to obviously have your horse standing up. So you, you're really in tune and in, you've, you've got your your, rein, your hands and your reins set, your, 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 your cores engaged, you're breathing, you're relaxing yourself and you're mindful of, of your horse in front of you, what, what your horse is doing, what, you know, what its ears are doing, where is its nose positioned. Yeah, because if they turn their head to the side, then that can be missing the kick by half a length. So, um, you're, all, you're just, you, from the time you enter the gates or the time you get on your horse, you're actually getting a feel off your horse as to what um, what sort of uh, mindset he's in. You know, um, so yeah, standing up and being 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 ready to go is, is the first port of call, and and that's um, that's when your your senses are really heightened as the, the last one's going in. And um, you know, the, the gates open, and then, for instance, on Saturday, I've got um, think about it, John, just on my inside. 
um, and, and obviously overpasses drawn under him. And then I've got Cylinder, Espiona, I wish I win drawn one. So, you know, without having gone through the race completely, I'd, I'd say that I'm going to be somewhere hopefully near the back of Think About It. Um, I like the way Ryan was was able to use the inside draw and the slipper, and he actually chased along behind that quick speed in the golden slipper on Shinzo. Um, so I I would like to be I'd like to be midfield basically. Um, and if on I'm in front, if I'm in just one off the fence, um, I think being able to build and and flow into the race is going to be key. Similar to how Ryan rode him in the slipper, he was able to just build, 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 build. Um, without getting any, any interrupted run is, is going to be vital. So um, it's going to be interesting to see what a few of the horses do on my outside. You know, you've got um, In Secret drawn wide. Mazu, does he need some cover? Um, who else is there? Alcohol Free. I'd, 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 I'd like to think that Alcohol, alcohol Free goes forward a bit with Willow mm. on. So um, really interesting lineup. I think um, I would have liked to have seen overpass draw out a little bit it would have just just changed the dynamic of the race a little bit so for my sake and a few others hopefully they just don't sit up and we canter along and then overpass is, is too hard to catch so um but that's that's part of horse racing that's why everyone's so intrigued by it that was epic i absolutely <laughs> loved it i must say I, I, just on overpass i know you're not riding him but i feel as though he has a bit of a red zell feel to him i don't want to talk down Red Zell. He's a champion, won the race twice and plenty of other races along the way. But I always felt like there were probably others in the race with higher top end ability. And it's the pattern. It's the pattern. It's yeah. the versatility. It's the track condition. High cruising speed. And again, yeah. everything seems to kind of be playing out. And I can see you've got a concern with Overpass that it may just lob in front and get every favour. Well, that's right. B Bjorn gets them fit. We know that. And you've only got to have, for a sprinter, you've only got to have like cheap three quarters of a furlong or a furlong you know if you get if you get a cheap section then you can be hard to pick off so um yeah it's it's going to be really interesting um and and like you said i was able to do it twice on on red zero once drawing i think i drew six or seven and the other time i drew one and was able to just hold the front so um it'll it'll, it'll it adds a it adds an element of, of um um, it adds an it adds a different element when 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 the speed's drawn one uh, sorry when the speed's drawn in so we'll just mm. have to hopefully everyone's uh, aware of that. <laughs> I think everyone's aware of it. Are we wishing you all the uh, the best of luck on Saturday, buddy? So in a word, can you get your fourth and can Shinzo become the stallion of a generation, having won a golden slipper and mm. then possibly a Tab Everest as well? I think the horse is going as well as he can and. It wouldn't surprise me at all to see him run somewhere in the one, two, three. So, um, you know, it's a. I've got a lot of respect for the whole field, um, and I'm I'm not going to sit here and say you can just go and win because that'd be crazy. But I know the horse is going great, and I wouldn't write him off uh, after that that last run. So, fingers crossed. Two things to finish off. One, we'll be cheering for you, mm. and two. We've said that to every jockey we've chatted to over the course of the past week. But we mean it with you, mate. Thanks for coming on. No worries, guys. Thanks for having me. Enjoy. Oh, Three-time Everest winner, Kieran McAvoy, joining us on So We Think. Time for the head-to-head -head where we take a key matchup from the race day and pick apart the biggest competitors in it. And we have to go with the Everest this week, Ben. And two at the top of the betting there in I Wish I Win and Think About It. So after the barrier draw on Tuesday night, we thought that, we might have a shortener, a firmer out of these two. Not the case. They've both kind of stayed the same, if not drifted. And now we have $5 the field. I definitely don't agree with the premise that I wish I win has been given the visitor's draw in one. I don't think it's as bad as they've made out. Yes, you'd prefer to be outside, as we saw in the TJ, drawn 12. I think they were that day, came around the outside, launched off the back of Giga Kick and proved too strong. So our head-to-heads, I wish I win and think about it. With I wish I win... I do feel as though the TJ is the natural lead up. I know it's a, a while back, but they're the best horses. Giga Kick was in it. Nature Strip was still in it. And I wish I win was too good for them. Yes, the draw a slight negative. In the money, 15 of 15. $8 million in prize money. There are negatives. So in secret, beat I wish I win. Remember over the 1,200 in the new market. Mm. And that was the run before the TJ. I do worry that... I do worry that maybe 1,200's a bit too short. Is it, they get a little bit older. 
Um, so that's probably my one conviction. But maybe the same thing could be said for Think About It because Think uh, think About It's one group, one's out to 1,400 too. The concern for me with I Wish I Win is the programming as such. Like I know Moods is a genius, but the dropping from the 14 in the Memsey where he ran third mm. with a big gap in between runs to come back to the six at Royal Randwick in a high-pressure race. Like, you'll have a fitness edge, I guess, having raced over the 14, but that's a long while ago. So He's by yeah. Savabil. He's won a Golden Eagle at 1,500. Going to get 16, 2,000 in time, you'd think. If the Everest wasn't a thing, there's no way this is the prep, I don't think. I mean, Moods may come out and say Ben's an idiot if he listened to me. I doubt <laughs> he would. But I reckon they'd be eyeing off 1,400 metre features or even mile features, yeah. maybe 2,000 metres. So um, that is a one that is one conviction. But as for think about it, it's one ten of 11. Hard to really question the form. What I will say is that this time last year or August last year was in a benchmark 72 over yeah. 1,300 and got beaten by Capistrata. Yeah. The elevation has been ridiculous. And I know that he's now a two-time Group 1 winner, but this is an extra level again. Do you think he can make the jump? Yeah, I agree with you that this is a big jump up, even though he's won those two group ones in Queensland over the winter. You're right. So this winning streak started in January at Warwick Farm in a benchmark 72. We know that he can get fizzy. He can get loose in the yard. He's a bit of a reptile. He just, you, mm. you know, he's wants to get out there and get it done. And then when he gets behind the gates, he settles and he calms. It is an astronomical jump to go from the 72 to an Everest within a year, but mm. it's been done before. Look at Giga Kick last year, a maiden to winning an Everest in only five starts. So mm. I don't think that's a big deterrent. As a head-to-head matchup, I probably like the programming, the draw, the way he'll be ridden better for Think About It. I agree with everything except for the additional part of who's the best horse. And I'm not convinced there yet. I still think I wish I wins top end speed. If they unleash it, say the 200, they get out, see daylight. I still think I wish I win could go straight past. Think about it. Well, they're the two favourites in the market. And I suppose on Saturday, one will firm, one will drift. Who will start favourite? Time will tell. Well, what would be the fairy tale story if it were to come off at Royal Randwick on Saturday? The one that would really get you in the feels, Ben? There are always fairy tale stories. Every race meeting, which is... I think why I love the game, it is the stories, but Think It Over would definitely be the one for me. It's always hard to know whether you're talking about Think It Over or Think About It or any other So You Think horse. But Kerry Parker's is one that's pretty, tugs on the heartstrings a little bit. The tendon injury a while back for a horse that had just gone group one after group one after group one, underrated nearly every start, then to take such a long break. Most horses wouldn't have come back from that. To win last time out, to go into a huge race like the King Charles III, which we're all so excited about, $5 million in prize money. If they could come back from where he was to win this race, it would it would be one of the best training achievements of my lifetime. And for someone who doesn't get a huge amount of recognition as well in Kerry Parker training down at Kembla, like he's not a big time trainer with 200 in work at Rose Hill or Randwick. He's got a small stable and he loves his horses. He does always have a good one though. Yeah, he does. Always has a good one. And at the moment he's got two good ones. But this horse is, yeah, that'd be my fairy tale. How about yours? And they go head to head in the same race, which is fascinating. Uh, For me, it would be Buenas Noches, I think, in the Everest for a few different reasons. He's the cheapest horse in the field. He was a $40,000 per purchase um he's got a big group of owners all across the country a big group of them in melbourne as well i love matt smith as a trainer he doesn't get the accolades that he deserves because he doesn't have a big stable his wife melissa is also heavily involved um, with running the business as well he's only at his 10th start and it's dylan gibbons for me that would make it even more of a fairy tale. So he was the first apprentice to be selected to ever ride in the race. Of course, Zach Lloyd has a mm. has a ride this year as well. But Dylan was the first one selected. And I think he's a wonderful young man. He's a great apprentice, but he's going to become an even better, better fully-fledged jockey in time. And um, wouldn't that be a story? Can I throw in a third one, Go which I know it. you agree with? Overpass, more for the success of Josh Parr. So only a few weeks ago, absolutely terrible fall. Uh, His horse was a little bit scattered before the start, just bolted on him. I was about to run through a barrier, through a hard left. He got thrown down. 
A small bleed on the brain, terrible concussion, had no idea how he'd got there. Now suddenly he's back a few weeks later and contesting an Everest. And I just want to throw in too the loyalty of the owners and Bjorn because they could have said this is not the ideal lead up to an Everest and they've stuck true with one of the best front running riders in the country. And one of the nicest guys as yeah. well. Can you imagine the party if uh, Overpass were to win? Bjorn and Josh yeah. and the Ram Racing crew would be turning things up a notch in Sydney. Bjorn will win that party. He'll win that race. <laughs> Correct. It'll be daylight second, but it would be a fairy tale if they won. Tell us about a blue blood racing on Saturday, Ben, either one with big breeding or who had a big price tag. Yeah, so across when you've got races of this calibre, you're always going to have some well-bred commodities in there. But this, we don't want to focus necessarily on the, the biggest races. It's a chance to highlight other horses across the card. And one of those is Snowman. So for those who've done their form, you would have seen Riff Rocker come out and absolutely bolt him down south them. last week with James McDonald in the saddle for Chris Waller. He also has Snowman. In terms of the breeding, they genuinely don't get too much better than this. By the champion sire in Snitzel. And then when you have a look at the dam, you might see, we'll have a look at woman's debut win. She wins by two at Canterbury. But that doesn't tell the whole story. She's only had a limited preparation, has then had a year off the scene, changed stables, big hiccup, never really bounced back. So we never got to see the best of her. But when you have a look at her breeding, so she's by Frankel. So the greatest that we've ever seen, with all due respect to Bruce and the Wenks lovers, I have Frankel Top. Yep. But he's the siren. More joyous was her dam. So she was ridiculously well-bred. So when you have a look at the bloodlines for this source, Snowman, you've got Snitzel, Frankel, and More Joyous. How's he not going to be a star? I will say the first few runs of his career left a little bit to be, <laughs> to be desired. But that said, as soon as they got up in trip, we started to see the best of him. And now we've seen the form Frank. So that is one that certainly caught my eye for the breeding buffs out there. That, he's in the gloaming. Um, the market heading towards Tom Kitten at the moment. I reckon they're, he's pretty short. I reckon there should be... You know, greater room there at the top. Okay, yeah, well, I have Tom Kitten on top. I think Tom Kitten will be winning and will go down to Melbourne and take out better races down there, or bigger races, I should say. But I do think that Snowman is maybe a touch on the forgotten side price-wise. So you never know. Chris Waller's capable of great things. It's hard to believe that a show in its infancy, week one, show one, has already had a copyright infringement. The lawyers have been in contact and a segment has been pulled. Pulled might be a stretch, adapted, because as it turns out, there's another show, <laughs> an award-winning show. Oh, uh, soon to be. Soon yes. to be, yeah. that had a segment remarkably similar called What's in a Name. Yeah, uh, Horses for Courses on 7 Plus uh, oh. and 7 Mate as well. I didn't know you were going to plug that. Friday and Saturdays. Right. Basically where we ask uh, what's in a name of a horse, weird, wacky, wonderful, or really well thought out. So I did say we can't call it that, but let's go with naming rights because I do love horses – who are super well-named and the owners who have put the time and the effort to think about it correctly. As you know, on a Saturday, I'm paid to essentially do the tab markets on seven. And rather than reading the prices, I often just confuse myself a little bit and start telling stories about how horses are named. <laughs> Instead, I just can't focus for 45 seconds just on prices. On a Wednesday, they give me free reign. Yeah, it's I, loose. Yeah, I can just talk as long as I like about it. Well, this is one you did find on a Wednesday. Exactly. Who raced at the Kenzo a couple of weeks back and goes around on Saturday. Body Bob. And you loved this horse, partially for trainer's involvement, but also the naming as well. So after legendary Souths captain Bobby McCarthy. Well, speaking of copyright infringement, so his nickname was The Body, just like Elle McPherson's was The Body, and, yeah. and mine. Uh, funnily yeah. enough, yeah. So that was his nickname. <laughs> the owners drank with Body Bob yep. regularly mm. at the surf club there at Coogee. So as a result, they've named their horse Body Bob, which I think is fantastic. He's won his past four starts, two of them in the city. Pat Murphy getting city winners is just so exciting. He's one of the nicest blokes. And just a little... A snippet from a Wednesday, we have a, a ground producer who goes out and gets everyone and brings them over for the interviews because, God forbid, I have to walk to get them. <laughs> He's so lazy. And so they bring they bring the trainer over. And usually, you know, it's it's Pete and Paul Snowden and it's Team Hawks. The big guys. It's, yeah, it's Adrian yeah. Bott and this. And, and our producers wandered over and said, excuse me, Pat, can we uh, take you for an interview? Could not have been more shocked. He's, he looked around. Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it, so he's made his way out there and he felt a little bit embarrassed that he was the one that had been picked out of the group to come out and have a chat. And then he's come out and won, body bob. And it was so exciting post-race. So I, t- I said to him, I'm so proud of you and happy for you. And he just absolutely loves the horse. So when it comes to... You know, what's in a name or what was it? Naming, Naming rights. rights. <laughs> Body Bob is the one this week. Well, going around race two at Randwick tomorrow. Can you imagine, Pat, if we were to get a winner on Everest Day? I want to be at that party. Ugh. Before we get to our all-important tips, we've got to... Download the tab app. Yep. For one. And get to our predictions. Grand predictions they are. Yes. So maybe an early crow as to what will happen over the course of the weekend. The headline in the paper Monday morning. You're not allowed to say early crow. crow. That's another copyright infringement <laughs> on the Behind the Gates team on a Saturday morning. Yeah, but we're all family but here. Yeah, it conceptually <laughs> we have stolen this and I'm glad you made that clear. So this is where we essentially say what is the headline going to be on Sunday but we're picking it today. Yeah. This won't be a headline because it's not newsworthy enough. But my big Jeez, it's claim, wordy as well. It is. Well, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> my big prediction is that visiting jockeys will ride more winners at Randwick on Saturday than Sydney's regulars. I need a lot to go right. Purton, Bowman. Williams. Williams. Carr. Carr, Benno, Nolan. Zaki. Nolan, I wish I win. Mm. Ooh, it's a nice one. At first you were like, there are not enough. And now that you've sort of gone through the list, you're thinking he's half a chance. I still need a lot to go right. I reckon Zach needs to strike on one at odds and then suddenly I'm in the game. Fascinating stuff. Yeah. What's yours? Mine is one that will definitely please a lot of people. And I think we're going to see the biggest crowd ever at Randwick. So Royal Randwick rocking with biggest crowd ever. Do you have any statistical... Thing to back well, this last up. year you know on Everest Day, record, we were at 45, weren't we? They're saying that we could get up to 50,000 people at Randwick. So, wait a Saturday. minute. Biggest Everest crowd or biggest crowd ever biggest at Biggest crowd ever at Randwick. Do you know what the biggest crowd ever is? Not 50,000. This is just a big statement. Yeah. Baseless. Yeah. Love it. Grand. All I know Baseless is. Baseless and big. I big know and that bold. two people will be there at least. And that's us. Yep. And that place is going to be heaving. Post Everest. Oh, when don't. the music starts. Could be one of my favourite times of the year. Apart from maybe the race itself. It's going to be so good. When we were there only a few weeks ago and we were doing Epsom Day and uh, Havana Brown was playing. Yes. We needed to get a uh, beverage quick smart to be able to fit in with that crowd. Who did I think Havana Brown was? <laughs> I don't. Is someone related to Corey Brown? <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't. Uh, I wasn't quite down with the uh Yeah, you're, the a cool, you're a cool cat, mate. It's a bit of a shame. <laughs> but that's okay. We've got plenty more to do, haven't we? Time to find a few winners for Saturday, particularly at Royal Randwick. And uh, we've got a sponsor. We certainly do. So for those who are unaware, Bet's friends on the Tab app have been good enough to sponsor this segment. They kind of had to, being a Tab show. Yeah. But that said, if you get the opportunity, there are different groups there. So the way that you do it, you set up a profile, then there are different groups. Black Bookers may or may not have a group there. I may or may not tip into it. But you can also set up your own and you can say to your friends, hey, come and join my group. You can see what my selections are. If you tip like me, you probably don't want to do that. You could end up friendless. But uh, it's a really good concept. And there's a chance there to, if you don't like the tip or it goes, you know, terribly, you can post emojis as Give comments. Your feedback. We don't allow actual comments yet because it would be too abusive. Yeah. But the occasional, you know, poo emoji pops up oh, on Oh, thumbs mine. up. Some thumbs up. A few flames. Love hearts. Yeah, the, the occasional love heart eyes, yeah, which I, I take that. as, Ben, you're my favourite. Yeah. But <laughs> either way, uh, make sure to join it. So Bet's friends on the Tab app, you can do it for free. Yep. If you're having a wager on the weekend, please do so responsibly. And you are. I definitely am. It's a great market to have a bet in. Uh, let's take a look at my best for the weekend. I think it's Arctic Glamour in the Reginald Allen for the listed filly, uh, the, the listed race for the three-year-old fillies. She's on a path to head to the 1,000 guineas. Yep. I loved her last start win. Yeah. Four-length victory for the Ryan Alexio stable. Um, Kieran, who was a guest on the show a little bit earlier to ride, I just think she's quality with a Q. She's just got so much about her. Did you happen to see Gerald Ryan's post-race interview that day? He was very excited and he was... Bullish. The final sentence has had me excited ever since he said it. He talked up the path all the way to the Thousand Guineas, which we know is in the back, real back part of the I thought it was May next stuff. year, but yeah. it's actually in well, November. It might as well be, <laughs> but it's so far back. But I said to him, good, good luck. I hope that this girl lives up to the hype. 
Last two words. She, she will. will. I know. I was mm. watching you. Um, so good. My value bet on the card will be Kovalika uh, in the King Charles the Third run the really fast sectionals mm. that we saw um, in the Epsom, Waller and Berry combining again. The draw is a little bit sticky, obviously, but he's got that great turn of speed at the end of his races where I think he'll be in the finish. So that's an each way play for me. In the Everest... I am with Overpass. Oh. I think he'll stick out in front. He'll be too quick for them. If he gets challenged slightly um, to the left by something, maybe cylinder or alcohol free, yeah. the pace will be on, but he'll be able to sustain that gallop. And I would love to see Josh Parr get a big win after everything that he's been through. My tip in the King Charles, fangirl, I reckon she's made great improvement out of the seven uh, stakes and J-Mac back with her as well. And then in the guineas, now that we've had that rain in Melbourne, I am all chips all in. Okay. With Militarise, a three-time Group 1 winner. So I think the SF will stand up down in Melbourne. I regret sending through the tips yesterday. Do you? I do. A because the rain has caused fear in me as well. Mm. I'm in the Steppardy camp, which, you know, I'm not saying won't breaststroke through to victory. But Militarise, that is a huge elevation. Because my fear is the distance being a little bit too short. But we know that wet tracks, sometimes you do need that little bit more staying pedigree in the legs. And... I am really you, do you scared. Wanna, do you want to change? Do you want to be with me? Because we know that The show will be better if swims. I don't change next week. Okay. Don't you agree? I'd so love, you're militarised. Yeah. I'm step party. All right. Done. But when it comes to best of the day, I am now a believer with yellow brick. Now that I've had a proper look through and I've okay. seen the depth of the horses, like this horse knocked off Redina last prep, that's all stacked up. So, yeah, last start doesn't read well. Uh, as soon as you see the location of the loss, you're kind of like, oh, to how are you now going to? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't quite look good, but I reckon race eight is just there for Yellow Brick to win. Nails Murphy has won. I'm a bit frustrated the $15 is gone, but for those unaware, this is a, a new one to Australia. Zach Purton's in the saddle and looks a live chance. The barrier is a bit of a hindrance. It was out there in 15, but I think looks a nice value pick. The Everest I'm going with, I wish I win, I think is the best horse in the race, and I'm giving up from there. The map is a problem. Oh, the gate, the sticky gate. I mean, Mood said he didn't want to be drawn on the inside and he's drawn one. He's just saying that. He wants a better price. You're so, so right. <laughs> so I wish I win, draws one. Not desirable, but the second bet I'll have in that race is Espiona. Okay. Uh, I know that she's got a conviction. She throws her head, all, head to the head left. To the side. Oh. Super weird. But if she doesn't see daylight till the 30, I want to just in, hidden. You don't even see her. Yeah. So that Darren goes, who is that? Yep. I want one of those. And just sticks the beak out. Bang. I reckon she's got the ability to win it. She'd be the first mare to win it as well. She would. They haven't fared well, Phillies and mares, no. overall. There's a few in this year in secret as well. Yeah, we'll see. A buckaroo at $21 in the King Charles. Okay. That would cause a surprise. But yeah. an import. I, so where do you reckon Australians stop being dominant? What distance range? The mile. The mile. 14 so to the mile. that's where we're at. So yeah, it's awkward, isn't so it's, it? So it, that's mi that middle point, I think. Forgotten horse. Because it's got good, like really good form alongside light infantry overseas. And Hugh Bowman on. Nice draw. $21. What's not to like? It's one of those horses that'll win and we all go, geez, how do we let that through to mm. the keeper? So I'm knocking it for six now. Step Artie. The other one. In the guineas. All right. Well, that's so we think. And that's what we think that's about what we thought. this weekend's racing at yep. Royal Randwick and at Caulfield as well. Send us your thoughts. Hopefully you're back winner, of course. Gamble responsibly as well. Did you have fun? You're not allowed to do the gamble responsibly. Oh, that's your line. Exactly right. Okay, sorry. Yeah. T's and C's apply. Gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-858-858 or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. Perfect. That work? Thank you. Good end of the show. We might do this again. <laughs> What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.